Hello, this is Amaka Isebunandu, the Excel coach. We started a series which is accounting on Excel for service-based business. We did the part A some few days back, and this is the part B of that training. So if you've not watched the part A of this training, I'll advise you do so that you have a good grasp of where we are coming from, right? So I'll be dropping the link to the part A of this training in the description section of this video and also drop it in the comment section. So do well to watch the part A so that you'll understand the part B of this training. Right. So we looked at a case study, Joy Delivery Enterprise, and we made entry for each of these transactions here in the general ledger. And at the end, we we're able to derive this financial statement. And you can see our financial statement telling us its balance. And it's a start 31st January 2024. This is a start date of the template. We started using this template. So now if you look at the entry we have made all through from the first uh, training, you can watch it and see how we made all this entry and the financial statement we are able to derive from this, you will notice that there are some things that are not in the income statement, like the rent expense. Yes, we captured it, but we captured it as the prepaid rent. And that's why you find it in the current assets section of the balance sheet. Now, it's a rent that is paid for a year, one full year, that's 12 months. So what we need to do in this training is what we call the non-cash adjustment or end of month adjustment. So what is the element of this amount that is to be charged in January? The same thing we paid for prepaid insurance, right? And you can see it in the income statement as an expense. So what element of this prepaid insurance, which is going to be for a period of, I think either a year or 12 months, we'll look at that in the case study. And what element of this are we charging to January, right? So these are things I want us to look at in this particular training. So we'll be doing some end of month adjustment. Even the motor vehicle we bought, we charge it to the fixed assets. Mind you, when you charge a fixed assets, there should be an element of that assets that should be expensed on a monthly basis, which is called depreciation. So we also need to charge that element. We'll calculate and charge. So in this training, we'll be looking at those items, end of month, non-cash adjustment item. We'll calculate them and we'll charge them appropriately. Right. So we'll start with the delivery van. Joy Delivery Enterprise purchased a delivery van of three million. Payment was made via bank. And we have this additional information. It says delivery van will last for five years. Now, because this delivery van will last for five years, we need to calculate the depreciation rate. Now, what is the annual depreciation rate? It's 100 divided by five because it's going to last for five years and we got 20%. Now, what is the annual depreciation? Because this this car is going to last for five years. We've gotten the annual depreciation. So we we'll we'll charge 20% to the 3 billion, which is the cost of the assets. We are assuming that we are using a straight line depreciation in this, in this case. So 3 million times 20% is 600,000, meaning that 600,000 is what will be expenses on a yearly basis for a period of five years. And now we are preparing for January, the first month in the first year. How much should we charge for that January? Monthly depreciation is going to be 600,000 divided by 12 because we have 12 months in a year. So 50,000. So this 50,000 is now what we're going to be charging as what depreciation. So how do we charge this depreciation? We'll go to our general ledger. And mind you, this is the month end adjustment or non-cash adjustment. So we go to our general ledger. We'll put the last day of the month, 31st of January, 2024. Now, for depreciation, because if we are looking at the motor van, so we shall call it depreciation expense. Depreciation on motor vehicle. We'll just put the MV, right? Motor vehicle. So we have a depreciation expense account. So we'll just look at it. Look at the depreciation expense. So first of all, we'll debit it. And mind you, for expense, I say expense and assets has the same balance. Their default is debit. So whatever that will increase an expense account or an access account is a debit. Whatever that will reduce it is a word, is a credit. Now, the depreciation expense is going to the income statement. And this is the element of the fixed assets that will be expensed on a monthly basis. I would say it's 50,000. You saw how we computed it. Now, we need to put in the second entry. And that's why you are saying not balance. This general ledger is automated in the sense that you are at each point, your debit entry must be equal to your credit entry. For each transaction, there should be at least two entries. We have made one entry for this transaction. 
what is the next entry? The next entry will copy the same dates, depreciation on motor vehicle. You can write your motor vehicle in full. So the next account we are going to be charging is an accumulated depreciation. And that is the account you see on the fixed assets account. Now, when you go to your financial statement, mind you, we have this accumulated depreciation motor vehicle. So this is the account. This accumulated depreciation is a contra account that will be reducing this motor vehicle because this is the amount that we bought the motor vehicle. But based on the information, this is going to last for five years. So we keep reducing the amount and this is the account we'll be reducing the amount into. Then when you say 3 million minus the amount here, it will give you the net book value. I believe you get that. So let's just go ahead and do it so that you'll understand. So we'll pick the accumulated depreciation, which is a contra access account. Our access account is up. So you select this account. So it's going to be a credit. A credit. That's why it's called a contra access account. Because access account by default, whatever you are increasing it, is going to be debit. So we are reducing it. Is a credit, but we are not charging to the motor vehicle. We are using the dep accumulated depreciation account, which is also an assets account, but a contra assets account. And that is why its behavior is the reverse of assets account. So we we'll charge 50,000 to this. So just follow me closely. And this is the adjustment for the end of motor adjustment for motor vehicle. We have charged the actual expense. So when you look at our financial statement, you see that the income statement has a depreciation expense of 50,000. Then you come to your balance sheet, you see the motor vehicle 50,000, it has reduced. So the balance of the motor vehicle is reducing as because 50,000 of the total amount has been used, right? So let's go to the next item. So we look at this annual rent of 600,000 for the office space. So annual rent of 600,000. So how much are we going to be charging on a monthly basis? So if 600,000 is the annual rent, you just say 600,000 divided by 12 and 50,000. So we'll go to our general ledger. So we have use the 31st of, because these entries are made at the end of the month, right? So this is uh, rent expense, rent, rent expense. So there should be a rent expense account here. So you select rent expense, mind you, it's an expense account. So 50,000. Expense account has the same behavior with assets account. So what's the next one? Initially, when we made this posting, if you look at prepaid rent, we sent the amount of prepaid rent. And if you look at your balance sheet, it's in prepaid rent. This amount is in the first amount, you see 600,000 prepaid rent. So now we have made this calculation saying that 50,000 should be charged as expense. We'll be reducing it until the 12th month where we'll charge the last 50,000 to the expense account. So for this first month, we are charging 50,000. So the next, the next entry now will be still the rent expense. So we are taking it to what? Prepaid. So we have to reduce that prepaid expense account because we've taken 50,000 out of it. So we'll look for the prepaid expense, which is up here, prepaid rent, sorry, prepaid rent, right? Then we'll charge credit it 50,000 in order to reduce it, right? So when you look at your financial statement, I want us to be seeing the impact it's having. Now look at your income statement. You have your rent expense now, 50,000. Now go to your assets account. You have your prepaid rent. Remember it was 50,000, now it's 550,000, right? So we are good to go. So let's look at the next adjustment entry. The next one is interest on loan. Mind you, we collected loan from Amaka Small, you can see it here. Joy Delivery Enterprise received the loan of two million from Amaka Small to pay back for a period of 10 months at an interest rate of 5%. So Joy Delivery received this loan to pay back, to pay back for a period of 10 months. So we need to compute how much will it accrue on a monthly basis, how much interest should we be paying on a monthly basis. So if the loan received is two million, the monthly interest is two million times. 5%, then divide by 10, and do this is 10,000. So meaning that 10,000 will be paid on a monthly basis. It's supposed to be paid on a monthly basis. Even if we have not paid that money, we assume that Joy Delivery Enterprise is operating on an accrual basis. So we need to charge that expense. It's accrued. That expense is accrued. Though not yet paid, but we need to charge it rightly. Right. So 10,000 is the interest that Joy Delivery Enterprise is supposed to pay. 
So we we'll charge that 10,000 to the interest expense account and also charge it as payable because we have not yet paid it. So we we'll go back to our general ledger because all this entry is as at the end of the month. So we'll put our interest expense. So first of all, we'll charge our interest expense account. There should be an interest expense account, which is an expense account. So 10,000. Then the next leg will go to the interest payable account. I will charge it because it's a liability account. So whatever that is going to increase a liability account is a credit. So 10,000. Liability and income works the same way. Now, when you look at your financial statement, we're just taking it one after the other so you can see. Now, look at the interest expense account. You can see 10,000 here. Now, go to your interest payable. You see the 10,000. Our loan account is still enter 2 million, but we have to separate the interest from the capital so that when payment is being made, the entry that will be made will have to reduce these two accounts. Right. So, Let's go back to the next adjustment. So the next adjustment is insurance premium. It says monthly insurance premium of 600,000. If you remember, we have joint delivery pay 600,000 to cover for 12 months insurance premium on the delivery van that was bought. So for the 12 months insurance premium, payment has already been made, but it's for a period of 12 months. So we need to charge each expense to its month. So we've, we've already posted this. If you look at the general ledger, if you look at prepaid insurance premium, we've already posted it to an account called prepaid insurance. Money left to our bank, I will post it to prepaid insurance, right? But we have not charged the elements that is for each month to each month. That's why we took it into this account. So now that we're going to be charging it, if you look at it, we have just to see it before we make the entry. So you see prepaid insurance, 600,000, right? So now let's make the entry. Let's go to the general ledger. So we'll make the entry. Mind you, the calculation is 50,000 for each month. So still on the 31st. So insurance premium, we just call it insurance premium. Then we'll select the expense account. So there should be an expense account on insurance, insurance expense. So charge 50,000 debits. Then the next entry, will be the insur still the insurance premium, but now we are charging the insurance, prepaid insurance account to reduce the amount there because we've taken the first amount that is due to the income statement, right? So 50,000, right? So that is it. So you look at your financial statement, definitely it's balanced. So you can see your insurance expense. Can you see 50,000 here? So when you look at the prepaid insurance, you can see it has reduced to 550,000. So you can see for that. So you will notice that even before we made this uh, non-cash adjustment or end of month adjustment, our financial statements was balanced and everything. But there's always need to ensure that you match its expense to its month so that your financial statement can give you the true picture of what is happening in your business. Right. So this is how we how to go about end of month or non-cash adjustments regarding your business. Right. So you will notice that as we are making this entry, our financial statement automatically is balanced. Note again that the total expense here, the total expense is now 168, while our total income is 50. So we are making a loss of 118. Right. A net loss of 118. And if you look at our retain any it has that net loss of 118 and our balance sheet is balanced six million eight eight two thousand six million eight eight two thousand total liability and owner's equity is the same thing as total assets right so showing that all the entries we made are accurate i believe you've gotten value from this please if you have do well to like this video give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button Hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload values. And don't forget to share with as many that you know that will benefit from this video and from this tutorial. Thank you, and I hope to see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.